Hudson Valley Nets. I am Memers on Ravelry and Memers66 on Instagram and Twitter. This is episode, I think it's 52. I am down at the river today near my home, uh, Steamboat Dock I am at. Um, and I was, it was raining this morning and I was thinking I would do this particular podcast in my house. But the sun came out, and how can I not podcast outside on such a beautiful autumn day? So, let's see. There is so much to cover because it's the weekend after Rhinebeck, and my gosh, let me get started. Um, I, it's, aside from being sick all week, it's really been an amazing week. I am. Um, have gotten a lot of knitting done. I was, um, I didn't really call in sick, but I kind of worked from home a couple of days because I was not feeling well and I have a pregnant co-worker and I didn't want to get anybody sick. So I did get a little more knitting done than usual since I could, I didn't have my commute. So let me show you first. Um, sorry about the strings. I haven't woven in the edges, but my coworker that is expecting. I'm making a um, baby sweater for her. This is the um, tribute sweater by Heatherly Walker. I just started putting the single crochet around the neckline. Now the pattern calls for um, a chain pico engine, and I just. I'm not liking it. This particular, it might have looked good with the yarn that she, um, oh, the sun's going down, so I'm getting really bright. The sun is like right there. Anyway, it just didn't look good with this yarn. It's thick and then held double. It was just too stiff for a pretty and delicate looking pico edging. So I'm thinking I might just do a garter stitch border down for the, um, button band. Oh, sorry. So the lighting is terrible now with the sun, but I really, really love, this is going to be super warm. It's a little stiff, but that's going to make it more warm. And I think I'm going to put buttons all the way down. Her baby is due in January. Her baby's name is going to be Penelope, by the way. Um, so I will put buttons all the way down so the baby can be nice and warm. I really love this pattern, how it came out and the beautiful textures and it just looks so heirloomy that I am just super pleased with it. So that is the baby blanket. Um, still not technically done because I need to do the button band and find some beautiful buttons for it. And I'll, pro I'll try and make them gender neutral, although I don't think she's going to have any more children. I, this is her second and I, I don't think they're going to try for any more, but you never know. I have also been working on, and it's it's not going to look much different to you because I'm still on the plain stockinette part, but believe it or not, I got a couple of rounds done on my fairies in my garden uh, shawl, look how bright this is in the sunlight, by Donna Dracunis. And here, if you can see... It's kind of a glimpse at the beautiful t um, beautiful pattern. So I'm at the garter stitch part. I'm getting ready for the fourth clue. It was a mystery knit along that I couldn't participate in with the rest of the crew because I was working on Mark's Rhinebeck sweater and that was the priority and this had to be put aside. Um, but now I hope to finish it. No rush, but I'm enjoying it very much. I love Donna's pattern. She, she's just beautiful, especially shawls. All right. The Rhinebeck sweater is done. So my next um, kind of priority is to, uh-oh, <laughs> drop stitch alert. Um, my next priority is to get some and I just ripped out a bunch of stitches, so I'm just haphazardly throwing them on a needle. Bear with me here. I'm sure that wind is very loud for you, and I apologize. Oh, dear. Ooh, Ooh sorry. 
Bye. I might edit this part out because that was a really strong gust of wind. But anyway, here is a washcloth from Dishcloth Diva that I am working on. This is using um, Valley Yarns. It's, which one is it? I think I have the, the um, band in here somewhere. Do I? I feel a band. No. I don't know. I feel a lavender sachet. Is this it? No. Nope. All right. I don't have the band. It is a, a Valley Yarns, which is wet from Webs. It's their brand of yarn. And it's a yummy, soft cotton. I love it. And I have another one that I finished. I'm going to show that to you in just a second. I have one more whip to show you. And this is in my Jan Smiley bag. Oh, by the way. My little skein bag and you know she came out just recently with a um, secret garden this was the bunny one this was from the bunny one I got two of her bunny bags and a skein of the mustache yarn when she did this and this is I think the last one I bought I bought the secret garden one I didn't bring it because I have so much to show you I figured I'll show you that the next one and who knows maybe I'll have that shawl started so back on track here um, Oh, and just to show you, I, I use the Dish, dish Diva dishcloths. I also have the um, Nitsan one. I got the both at Rhinebeck. But that's what I'm using for my senior level long washcloth. Um, last whip in my Jan Smiley bag. Using my Jan Smiley No Pokums, which I got from Jan at Rhinebeck. I ran into her and she gave me a free one. A little swag. Here is my Knit Circus socks. I've turned the fish lip kiss heel. I found in my stash, this is actually a Dirty Water Dye Works yarn, and it matches the yarn from the um, Knit Circus gradient perfectly. I mean, look, you cannot tell the difference. So, oh, I just throw my yarn in there. So, this will be a perfect, I didn't want to mess up. The look of the gradient by using up a bunch of yarn in the heel so I'm like super happy I had this yarn and so this is just the first sock and I'm just loving 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 this yarn the beautiful colors I'm so happy I found the other color for the heel and toes and this thing is really great to have now you can buy one or two from Jane Smiley for I really don't know how much they are and I might buy a few more I looked it up it's you can buy like a hundred of these at a time I don't know if you can buy them in smaller lots but you have to buy them in really huge lots They're not that expensive and you buy these rubber tips separate but I mean who needs a hundred well Jan bought a hundred and you can help her <laughs> get her money back if you buy them from her Etsy shop I highly recommend um, this up. I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that is it with the whips. Oh, I'm recording. No worries. <laughs> it's all right. No problem. That's it with the whips. So finished objects. I have one really quick to show you. This is a washcloth for the senior love along. I told you I was, um, hi, you want to come say hi? I told you I was, um, knitting it using the dishcloth divas pattern. And this is the one called olive. I love the texture of it. Do you like it? I used a puppy dog coming to visit. Hi. Um, it's really, really soft and stretchy and I think it's going to make someone very happy. And, um, it took me no time. A nice gauge and again this is the um, Valley Yarns from Webs. So I really like this. I want to make some uh, probably in a tighter gauge. 
uh, for um, dish rags in my kitchen because I have a new kitchen and I should make some dish rags for it, right? Um, that is my first finished object. And I'm going to hold off on this other finished object because I'm expecting company and they might actually model it for you. So we'll see. I'm hoping they show up. All right. So should I go and talk about spinning a little bit, which kind of is also about rowing back because I got, um, so we'll combine spinning with Rhinebeck because I got the spindles at Rhinebeck when I show you the spinning I did on them. I also have a FO for spinning, a very small, I actually have more than one. The other one is still drying at home and so because I, again, I have so much to talk about today, it can wait until next week. But, all right, so let's talk about, let me show you the finished object for spinning. Is it in this one? No, is it in this one? Yeah. This is, and it's going to look so beautiful in this light. No, that's too dark. This is um, from On The Round. They were um, a batch of ponies that I purchased a while back because I stopped spinning for a while. Um, I have the other color all spun up. I just haven't applied it yet, but I'm pretty much done with this whole group of ponies. I didn't bring all the other colors, but next week when I have the last color applied up and I have them all um, ready, I'll show you them all together. I loved spinning these ponies. They were so wonderful. These colors are just gorgeous. There's, see the speckles of green and blue and red? Oh, just gorgeous. We can get this closer. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that just beautiful? I love On The Round. She takes such beautiful care. I just really love her pony. So that's my one finished spinning object. Let me show you my other spindle. So this is also a Rhinebeck purchase. Every year for the past couple of years, or last year and this year, I've, I've gotten a Bosworth spindle. I love their spindles. They're amazing. And I am spinning up my um, a gift from Fondant Fibers. She sent me some, a while back I had a giveaway and she sent me a bag of fuzz, fuzzlings or batlings, I think batlings for my own spinning pleasure. And that's what I'm going to start spinning. I actually watched Emily of Fiber Towns podcast yesterday and she showed how she had a bunch of different fibers that she was spinning up on all her spindles and she was just going to apply them together, all these crazy colors, and I'm going to do the same with all these batlings. And anyway, this is, here's the information on this spindle. It's a Bosworth spindle. It's beautiful teak. And this is a very special purchase. This is um, teak that is from a temple, a Buddhist temple downed by an earthquake in India. So it's upcycled wood. Um, it's, teak is a beautiful, beautiful wood. It was, <laughs> it says Namaste on the back. It was a big purchase. Um, 30 grams or 1.6 ounces, which is like my favorite kind of pretty much weight. But I just really, really enjoy it. Um, spinning on this. I spent, I spun one of the, um, on the round ponies on this, or a few of them rather, but that is one of them. Now the next day on Sunday, I also bought another spindle. I didn't find them on my, on Saturday. Saturday was crazy. Absolutely nuts. Sunday was the complete opposite. It was just such a pleasure shopping on Sunday because it was much less packed. 
and I went through the barns in the back and I found a seller selling supported spindles. So here is a Tibetan spindle I bought. I don't quite remember the vendor's name, but I know that this is a true, oh my goodness, truecreations.biz is engraved. You can't see it now. Truecreations.biz is the uh, um, company that made this spindle. And it is really sharp up here. I, I gave myself a puncture wound with this, like a bad one. It was bleeding bad. So I don't know how to s support spindle and I didn't have a clue how to get started. And, um, luckily I ran into Emily of Fiber Town on Sunday and she gave me a down and dirty lesson and I actually recorded her. And then I also, so I did a little based on what Emily told me. Let, let me show you what I did. I bought a bag of fiber, um, for eight bucks at Rhinebeck to practice with and this is what I spun up at Rhinebeck. I definitely if you see what's at the center you can see I got better. It's just green and blacks um, but I just wanted something to practice with it wasn't even it just said wool <laughs> so I don't even know what breed this is or anything but I got I picked it up once I picked it up I was fine. Uh, it's definitely slower going so I like I said I practiced with this for a little while this is only 0.1 ounces right here. <coughs> Excuse me. I still have a leftover cough from, I had bronchitis last week. I was pretty sick. I was really actually miserable. Um, and I don't know if it was from being out in the weather on Sunday. It was, um, it was snowy slash rainy slash very cold Sunday at Rhinebeck. But uh, forgive me if I, if I cough a little bit. But for the most part, I'm better. Um, what I am spinning on these spindles now is a blend of merino and silk. They are puny style roll eggs from Naturally and Nitty. I've had these in my stash for quite some time now, but they're beautiful. Let me take them. Um, I, I like Naturally and Nitty's roll eggs. Um, they were the first roll eggs I ever bought, or punies, whatever you want to call them. But these are beautiful sky blues mixed with cobalt blues. Really, really, really pretty. And I'll probably ply this with some rainbow plumies I have of hers. Let me shove them these back in. Um, they are, the colorway is called Bella Sky. They've been in my stash a couple of years, so I don't know if she would have this color anymore. But they are Superwash Merino Silk and Superwash BFL. I've got a total of four ounces. I got this, this two ounces and another two ounces at home. And spinning them on this supported spindle, it's nice because I can take my time drafting. I have a hard time, and I've talked about this before, I have a hard time, especially on a spindle, um, spinning anything with silk in it. It's just, I have a hard time drafting it nicely. Um, I did some gourmet stash poonies a while ago or earlier this year, and I was just really getting kind of frustrated with trying to um, with a with a drop spindle trying to get them to um, draft evenly so this is nicer in that I can draft them perfectly the way I want it I give it a little test to make sure I apply I've spun it enough but it's it's slower so I'm just gonna relax and, and enjoy it so that are those are my whips and my spinning and a couple of the purchases from Rhinebeck so let's talk about Rhinebeck. So I have everything here in the bag in front of me. Um, but let me talk to you a little bit first about how the day went. I got there Saturday with my husband. We, he has, he had all last weekend off because he usually works every weekend. And he had the whole week off and then he had this weekend off. Um, so he came with me Saturday wearing his Rhinebeck sweater which he's supposed to meet me here. I was hoping he'd be here by now and, and can try it on so you could see it. But um, but whenever he gets here, I'll 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 record him if it's if I'm done before he gets here. Um, I um, got there Saturday with him. We got there super early. 
um, I would say about 8.30. We got online. It was a bit nippy. The line was huge, but it, it really moved fast. Uh, people, there were some really wonderful people, but there were some really just irritable, nasty people. I couldn't believe it. This one guy is like, just a a-hole. It's like, come on, stop being, don't be like that. Anyway, for the most part, everybody was wonderful. And I got some elbows. I'm sure I gave some elbows. I had to apologize a couple of times for knocking into people. And it's just the way it goes when you have that many people in, in, in that kind of space. So really just, just, you know, take it for what it's worth. All right. Anyway, so we got in and Mark, I just asked Mark what he wanted to do. And he's like, you know, I'm with you, wherever you want to go, I'm going to follow. And really what I wanted to do first was I had seen the socks at rock, um, Rhinebeck colorway, um, online. I, I get her blog and I love the color and I wanted to pick that up. Let me see if I can pull that out. Um, uh, here they are. Let's get these out first. So I went to um, the place that was selling the socks at Rock, and forgive me, but I don't remember the name. And I grabbed my Rhinebeck colorway. Here it is. It's got like this turquoisey blue, this mossy green, this uh, really beautiful egg purple here, and then a darker green. To me, this is not really autumnal, in my opinion, but it, it, it does capture, you know what it reminds me of? Um, Indian corn with the purples. And then I just, it, the, the greens and blues honestly remind me of uh, water, which is, water is all over the place up there with the um, reservoirs and with the river. And then, so I got this in the lightweight. And I grabbed us, Mark picked out a color for a pair of socks. He picked out cornucopius. And I got that in the medium weight because he wears through socks very quickly. The sun's going down. Here's orange and yellow and blues. More yellows. Definitely, this is definitely a Halloween-y autumn color. So that, that was my first purchase. While I was there, I ran into Jan Smiley and she gave me this beautiful swag bag um, as a gift and it had that poke me knot in it and it also had two other things. Let me get it, get it out. This little one with stitch markers. You can see the little stitch markers and I'm going to put some more in there. And this other one with a crochet hook in it for repairing drop stitches. Um, awesome, awesome. I'm so thankful. I would, I want to get more of these because my, uh, this would be great for putting my tapestry needles in. So great, great idea, Jan. And I'm definitely going to get more. And I think oh, she has her card in here. Jan B. Smiley, maker of things. She has an Etsy shop, janbsmiley.etsy.com. She was so, so nice and wonderful. I showed her that I had her socks in the bag that she made me with the canoes because I loved it. And actually, the baby sweater is also in a Jan Smiley bag. The one of the first ones she made before she even had her Etsy shop and I skipped it up. So, I got that. That was at... Um, um, the well the vendor that was selling the socks at rock they weren't actually there after that i went to um i've been hearing a lot and i know i have some friends that are friends with lisa souza 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 so i went to her booth to check out her things and i found i was just gonna get this one but when i went to the register to pay they showed me, um, they had her uh, Rhinebeck colorway by the register, which is so smart because at Miss Babs, um, 
if you went to Miss Babs first thing in the morning, every people were hoarding the uh, Rhinebeck colorway, which was sugar maple and beautiful. But I saw people that had like like five or six of them in their hands and they were passing them to friends and or buying like multiple packs of them and maybe purchasing them for other people. So it was difficult for people that were waiting to get even just get into the booth. There was nothing left for them. Um, so I just kind of turned around. I didn't even bother with Miss Babs actually at all this this year because there was I didn't I went back late on um, Sunday and it was still packed and I'm just like forget it. I just I just don't need this. Um, I was ho I loved her sugar maple colorway, but like I said, it was just it was impossible. But at the Lisa Sosa booth, they had it by the register and. Um, they didn't limit you, but I, I'm thinking that it would be probably if Miss Babs had just kept the the Rhinebeck colorways by the register and maybe limited them to one or two per person, it would have made everybody else's shopping experience more pleasurable because there were the people there trying to get that colorway were like blocking everybody else from looking at anything, and more people would have had a fair chance to get their hands on one. I'm just saying. So here is the first um, item I picked from Lisa Souza. It's a, um, the color is called Iris Garden. It's gorgeous purples and browns. Like this is like, this is coming out as purple, but it's really like a dirt brown. It actually looks more like this, which is more like a gold. <laughs> the colors are not right because the sun is like right even with me and it's going down behind the mountain. But there are purples and greens and blues, and it is gorgeous. This is a superwash merino, 5.3 ounces, 500 yards. It's a fingering weight, and this would make such a nice size shawl. Uh, and it's such a gorgeous color. I love, love, love this. Um, so, so pleased with Lisa Souza. I can't tell you. So, like I said, I got to the register and I saw her colorway and it blew me away. I got two skeins. I got one in her baby alpaca and the color looks, it, it picked up differently on the different fibers. So, 70% alpaca, 30% silk. I'm going to make my sister Kim a Christmas present with this. Um, I, I posted a picture of this on Instagram, like my stash. And my sister Kim texted me. She says, so what are you making me with this? <laughs> yeah, she loved it that much. I knew she would too. And I actually, I saw it and I said, this is her color. This is super, super soft. It's lightly plied. It's loosely plied to ply. And, you know, it's alpaca, baby alpaca and silk. You can imagine how soft it is. And it's the Rhinebeck 15 colorway. And I think this is the best Rhinebeck colorway I saw at Rhinebeck this year from any of the vendors, including the Sugar Maple. Now the colors are so much more saturated on the sock yarn. This is Hard Twist Petite Sock Yarn, 100% Superwash Merino, 100 grams, 500 yards. So it's a much uh, um, thinner fingering weight, whereas this Iris Garden is a thicker fingering weight. Um, this is Superwash, okay. The Rhinebeck 2015, I wish you could see the color. I should have done this before the sun started going down, but how bright and beautiful and luscious and saturated these are. I'm gonna put pictures at the end because you have to see how beautiful these are. So that and the, um, and the uh, Bosworth Spindle, those were my Saturday purchases. After that, Mark and I went to the um, podcaster meetup. I didn't, last year I ran around and I just wanted pictures with all these great podcasters that I love so much. I saw a lot of them there again this year, but I didn't like bounce around to try and say hello. I actually ended up talking with, um, see I saw Emily and I talked with her a bit. She saw us from far away across. I met um, New Hampshire Knits. Um, which I, I don't listen to podcasts often. I, I prefer the, um, uh, oh, now you can see. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, let me show you the other ones quick before the light isn't perfect. <gasps> oh, it's so beautiful. We had a great time at the podcaster meetup. It was during that time that Rachel showed up, my daughter. And it was just lovely. I saw um, Lisa from Saratoga. She's Saratoga Knits and her daughter Sophia, which is um, Ichigo Knits. She has a, a podcast as well, a lovely podcast. Um, and I chatted with her for a while. She's, uh, her and Sophia are the ones I met up in Saratoga when I was on my way back from um, uh, George, uh, Lake George this past summer. So anyway, that being said, that's um, the rest that we we um, went and got food. Oh, I wish I don't have the cheese with me. Mar I know Mark has some pictures, but there's a, a farm in upstate um, in that general area that makes some really delicious goat and and milk cheeses that we picked up one of each of the cheeses. Mark and I love cheese. Um, and then what else did we do? We we didn't go. I didn't go into the back barns hardly at all. Um, we just walked around and looked and we checked out the food area him and rachel went off and walked around a little bit and i um mark and i ate food early by the way on saturday we ate lunch at like 10 30 because we knew that at lunchtime on forget about it you can't get food unless you spend a, a big chunk of your day on a line and i didn't want to do that so Rachel came late and so her and Mark also went and got some food real quick and I just sat in it and we hung out for a while. I got coffee and a cookie and um, I think we left, I want to say around four. It was a really, really wonderful, beautiful day. We came back and we met um, Sandy and all of them um, for dinner at around six but we we did it locally we didn't go out and eat we went and had sushi and it was really nice and we had a great time and um, of course Sandy was there I did find Sandy eventually um, it, it was just really really wonderful and uh, we had a great time at dinner we like I said we came all the way home first and cause it was a long day but anyway Sunday I also did some purchasing. I had seen someone post some stash showing that they had gotten some hedgehog fibers which she as you know is one of my favorite vendors and so I went there first thing and I picked up this. Now just so you know Sunday my husband and my daughter were not with me. Early early Sunday morning Mark and Rachel got up early and drove towards Florida. They stopped in um, North Carolina at my uncle's house on the way. So I went up by myself because Sandy didn't want to go either and it was fine. I, I did spend a little bit of time in the afternoon with Emily but for the most part I was by myself but I was just shopping and enjoying and I had falafas on Sunday and it was the first time I had them because I don't, I don't like spending time online and they were out of this world. So this is um, Hedgehog Fiber Sock Yarn in the Aroma colorway. And it's mossy greens and purpley pinks and it's gorgeous and I love her colors and I'm gonna show you all the yarn real quick and then I'll talk about the day because it's getting dark but this is my local purchase this is from the farm Oasis fiber uh, farm fiber mill and uh, they're from Maine and I bought some I know it's got um, angora in it and wool, and it's beautiful. It's got it's got a more um, it's not all angora, so it's got a little bit of loft, but it's not completely loft like most angora. And here is the card for the farm, Oasis Farm. And like I said, the man was from uh, Maine. You can see they got bunnies and sheep up there. But if you check out their website. I know I got the yarn right on my Ravelry stash page and I'll check that out and I'll make sure that it's in the show notes because they do have a website. Um, I got two loop bats. Loved the color. Look at the turquoise in there and the orange 
with the browns and even black in the middle. I just love this. This is all merino, 4.3 ounces. And then I got this colorway, purples and golds. Love this co combination. Um, with a little bit of like a burgundy too, if you will. This is more like a burgundy, purpley burgundy. And this is more like a blue purple. And then we have the gold. And this again is merino, 100% merino, 5.2 ounces. And I learned from my last fiasco with the loop bats that I have to spin them tighter. I have to put more twist in them because, well, I'll talk about that next week because that's one of the spinning FOs is a loop bat from way back when that I finally kind of finished. Learned a big lesson. All right. The rest of the stash. I had to, of course, go see my favorite vendor in the whole world. And that's Spirit Trail Fiber Works, and I made a killing there. Let me show you. First, let me show you my one-off from them. Um, oh, you know who else I saw at the podcaster meetup? Little Skeen. And from Little Skeen, and she gave me, oh, well, they were attached. They're in the bag somewhere, but she gave me some lovely stitch markers. Let's see if I can find them. Hold on there. I know they're in here somewhere. Here they are. They came off the card. Isn't that sweet? Now, you say, oh, stitch markers, but one of them is a, is, has a nice charm on it, a leaf. And then the red is really the color of the maples there. And it wasn't just one. She gave me four. That's a whole set, and she usually sells them for 8 to $10. So this was really, really sweet. And I left them like this because I wanted to show you them on her card, but obviously they came off. But here's her card. And she said, thank you for your order, but obviously, I don't know. She is so, so very sweet and kind and nice. It was such a pleasure meeting her, and she was just so sweet and genuine. Um, all right, back to Spirit Trail Fiber Works. I bought... Sunna. I'm only knit one pair of socks with it, but man, do they last good. And I think it's because of the silk in here, but this is 75% super wash merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. And they last. I have a pair um, made with Sunna, and they have lasted forever. Now, this is a, a thicker um, fingering weight yarn, and it's very squishy, and I wouldn't... For very, very lacy shawls, you could use it, but I would use a very big needle because her colors are so gorgeous. I don't know if these are going to be socks or something else, but I love the blues and greens. I'm really into that since that pair of socks I just finished. I'm loving those colors together. So this is the colorway Solace, and it does remind me of uh, uh, being a, a place of solace. Really, really beautiful. All right, next I bought a sweater's worth of yarn from her. So I, I had put a design idea together and swatched with it earlier this year with some um, Jill Draper yarn, her Rockland yarn. That's her Marled yarn. And I emailed her and asked her if I could order a sweater's worth of it and she wouldn't do it. She she doesn't do custom orders and I just assumed she would. So I, I was very sad because I really wanted it in that color and in that ru uh, rustic kind of look. But then I saw this and this is a DK weight as well. It's the beautiful color. It's tiger's eye. This is um, Brigantia, Brigantia, which is 85% polework and 50% silk. Each skein is 200 grams and 600 yards. And this is a beautiful brown slash bronzy kind of coppery maybe um, color. And I bought three skeins of that and a skein of this to have some offsetting color work. This is actually Berte, which is also a DK. It's 75% superwash merino, 
15% cashmere and 10% um, silk, Bombex silk, which is the same as the Sunna, but it's a thicker, it's a um, DK. And I'm gonna make a sweater with this. And I was thinking when I bought it that I would use it to design my sweater, but this is soft and luxurious and drapey and it's not the ruggedness that I wanted for the style of sweater I had sketched out. And no, I've never designed a sweater before. And no, I'm not that great at making a sweater. But I know math. And I know how to get, you know, I know geometry. So I think I can do it. We'll see. Um, but I, after the fact, I thought I should make that first sweater. The outdoorsy, rugged one that I wanted to make with Jill's, um, Jill Draper's um, Rockland yarn. I could make that with peace fleece. It would be beautiful with peace fleece and I can even use a skein of green um, Rockland yarn uh, that Jill made for the color work part and I'll make a different sweater with this and I'm gonna use I um, signed up for the craftsy class with Amy Herzog and I have her books and I'll use her custom fit kind of know-how and I'll just make a really nice cardigan sweater for myself and I will put color work on it and it will just be a regular set in sleeve cardigan with color work around the yoke. Just green on brown. And it will be beautiful and flowy and luxurious. And I can't wait. I can't wait. All right, so that is what I got from Spiritual Fiber Works. I got um, the Dish Diva books from the um, Cooperative Press booth and I also got pom -pom, an issue of Pom Pom magazine who was there. They had hardly any left which was sad but and I kind of contemplated subscribing but I didn't because you know with magazines they pile up and if there's really something I want to make they do eventually digital digitize their um, editions but their patterns and their ma their magazines are very very high quality publications and I highly recommend them if you really believe you will make something out of them. All right, so Sunday, like I said, was really cold, but it was so peaceful on the grounds. There was much less people. It was so much nicer to shop. The whole experience was so much nicer. And I was a little lonely, I have to say, but it was okay. Um, it really was. I left, I think, around 4. The funny thing was that I didn't realize on Sunday they don't open until 10. And I got there at 9. And I remember pulling there. I'm like, wow, there's, where is everybody? I'm like, I can't believe I'm getting a, I got a parking spot like right next to the back entrance. I mean, literally, right next to the back entrance. And it was crazy. And I like, Oh, they don't open for an hour, but I had the best time talking to people while we were waiting for the gate to open for like an hour and I was sitting out there and we were knitting and we were all cold, but it was still fun and it was just awesome. And the nicest part about Sunday was there were no lines for any food or any bathrooms ever at all, all day. And they didn't run out of falafa like they did the day before. They actually ran out of food and had to close down the stall for a little while for the falafa because they uh, had to make more. <laughs> but I had the falafa and it was slamming good. And I had the apple cider donuts and I had some hot coffee and I had apple crisps with two scoops of vanilla on it instead of just one. And he's like, that's gonna be two extra dollars. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> um, and I found that spindle and I was sitting down at the benches and I was just playing with my new spindle and just spinning it and trying to get used to it and just feeling really wonderful. I, we, um, I had checked out the animals mostly with Mark on Saturday. We had fun walking and checking out all the beautiful sheep. Um, so I didn't do that so much the second day. I missed the leaping llamas. I totally, totally forgot about it. And Emily was sharing with me. I was so upset I missed it. 
but I guess next year, right? There will be a next year, and um, I can't wait for it already. I'm thinking um, for next year, I'm going to finish the sweater that had originally was supposed to be Mark's Rhinebeck sweater that was way, way, way too short, small for him. I'm going to finish that, and it'll be a Rhinebeck sweater for me next year. And maybe I'll get one of these um, uh, sweaters done with the that I have in my head. Um, if I, you know, Mark's, knitting Mark's Rhinebeck sweater was a huge learning experience for me. I've knit sweaters before, but really I don't knit sweaters or I haven't in the past knit sweaters that are custom fit. I knit boxy sweaters with no shaping and, you know, um, drop shoulders. So even my Alice Starmore sweater, which is um, all um, Fair Isle, it's really got no shaping in it. And honestly, I learned with that one, I learned the importance of row gauge because my row gauge is so tight that my sweater was not long enough for me. So when I knit marks and I had to compensate for his size in front and, and make the sleeves work, um, I learned a lot about shaping and then I really hope in going forward that I can utilize these Amy Herzog classes um, the I think it's fit to flatter it's her newest one on craftsy and get something that not only looks good on me that's cut nice um, to look good on me um, but that fits me right so we'll see how that goes you know I got a whole year to think about it and work on it um, and I was thinking that I have all this new yarn, what am I going to do? And I was thinking I definitely want to do mitts, fingerless mitts with this. Beautiful color, beautiful, soft, yummy yarn. Or a small, tight-fitting hat, but I think I would prefer the mitts. Um, I envision, I have a ton of her sock yarn, and I envision a crazy... Stephen West kind of stripey color shawl <laughs> with some of these. I had to find some neutrals to kind of fill in and offset, but and then the rest, I'm eventually going to do a sock blanket and these will be great colors on it. So this will probably get stowed away for a while, but it will eventually be something. It will not go to waste. This, oh, this is going to be something luscious. And it's going to be a shawl, and it's going to be a cozy shawl. I'm thinking this might be a Martina Bam, either brickless or something Martina Bam. Yes, because I just want to see the color. It's going to be all about the color and not so much about any stitch pattern. This is also going to be something for me, and it's not going to be on my feet because I want to see it. But I don't know what yet. Might be part of a two color shawl. I'll find a, sh a color that offsets it. But it's going to be nice. This I'm going to start working on very soon. This is going to be, it came with a pattern. I don't have it with me, but it came with a, a very pretty um, feather and fan cowl pattern. And I think I'll make that for my sister. And that's going to be for Christmas. So that'll be going on the needle soon. You'll be seeing that soon. I'm going to try another loop back. I have one more already from a couple of years ago, and now I have two new ones. I learned a lot. You'll, we'll talk about that next week. I don't know how soon, because I'm in the, into the spindle spinning mode. Um, maybe early next year, Mark will get another pair of socks, and hopefully soon I'll get these, because I still have last year's sock yarn that I picked out from them that I haven't knit up yet. And... That's about all I have to talk about. It's getting dark. It's a beautiful sunset. It's, the sky is kind of, it's not the best one, but it's a beautiful color and there's some ducks on the water. Let me, let me show you. Let me see here. Let it adjust. Color, let's see if I can get it. Are you getting the kind of feel of the sunset? Do you see the ducks coming out from the side of this tree here? See, they're going to be coming. Can you see it? 
see here. It should be coming soon on, do you see them on the water? Right there. Let me see here, you see the little duckies? I know they're way back there, but it's, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunset. All right. So, Mark never showed up. Oh, <laughs> speak of the devil. Mark just pulled in. All right, I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna make him put on the sweater and we'll show you his sweater. Yeah. Oh, that's his breed right here. Tremendously popular. Bloodlines tremendously popular breed of sheep right now. They are really, it's a nice opportunity to get a nice natural collar to you. Probably carrying twin. Thank you. Look at these cuties. Look at these cuties. You got itchies? <laughs> Want me to scratch your head? Want me to scratch your head? This one trying to get food down there. Hey, honey, because you're it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Spin around and out of this one? Spin around. Oh, now they can see you. Look how handsome he looks in his Rhinebeck sweater. Hi, the peoples. 